bless the congregation for a lot of different reasons, and I hope I'm somewhat understandable now. But I have been doing a lot of different things in the study here lately, especially with the kids in their classes. We've been discussing a lot of things, and this is one thing we might be discussing a little bit later. But when we talk about the love of God, many people uh, can look at it, and they look at God, and they say there's a difference between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New. They say that in the New Testament, they're dealing with love. And in the Old Testament, he's dealing with a lot of other things, but a lot of people do not look at the Old Testament and see the love that is there. And if you start looking, it's really quite amazing. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is one of the things that makes, helps us understand that love in old and new is the same God. It doesn't matter. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world. And people talk, look at that and point at that, and they forget what is the real meaning of true love. In John 14, 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. The point of it is, is that it's just like uh, James, the second chapter, talks about that faith, the difference between faith and works. The point of it is the work that you do proves your faith unto God. But if you go to the Old Testament, and you turn to the book of Genesis, excuse me, book of Exodus 20 and verse 6. What you see is, is the part where the Lord is saying he was a jealous God, and he will have no other gods before him. But in verse 6 he says, But showing mercy to thousands, and to those who love me, and keep my commandments. It's kind of amazing when I started looking at this to know that the same word that Jesus would say in John is the same thing he would say in Gen that same thing that was said in Genesis, uh, the 20th chapter. That's not that is re actually just the beginning. In Leviticus, Leviticus 19 and verse 18, he said, "You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor." as yourself. Where have you heard that before? In Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, in verse 37, he says, and because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their descendants after them, and he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power. He loved their fathers. In Deuteronomy 5, in verse 10, it says, But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me, and keep my commandments. Another repeat from Genesis, the 6th, 20th chapter, verse 6. In Deuteronomy 6, and verse 5, it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. We've seen that in the New Testament as well. In Deuteronomy 7 and verse 7, it says, The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in numbers than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. He chose to love them. In Deuteronomy 7 and verse 8, Because the Lord loves you. In verse 9, Therefore the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. He will love you and bless you and multiply you. That's in Deuteronomy 7, verse 13. In Deuteronomy 10, it says, Now Israel, who does the Lord require of you but to fear the Lord God, to walk in his ways, and to love him? When you go through all these, and I've I've just barely touched the subject, and, and we got, I don't even know if we have the time to go through everything I've got on this, but if you just look at the idea of, of what Jesus and God in the Old Testament are saying about love, 
I have loved you, he said. And he said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. You know, it, it's not very really hard to see that the comparison God is making and the information he's given us is that love is, is something that we show when we do what we've been asked. When we taught our children, if they loved us, they did what we told them to do. Pick up your, pick up your clothes, put away the trash, etc., etc. Love was proved by what you did. And love is that way. In marriage, love is proved by what you do not what you say. In marriage, we show our love to our spouses by the things we do for them, with them. These are all things that are a part of what true love is. And the true love of God is that he loved us. We are looking, partially quoted John 3, 16, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, uh, whosoever should believeth in him should not perish. Why did he say should not? He didn't say will not. He said should not. He said should not because it is conditional that we love him back. And we love him back by doing what he's asked us to do. And those are the things that are fundamental part of the Old Testament and the new. Old and new are full of God's love to help us to learn to follow Him. It is not forced. We are not, we are not martinets, puppets. It has to be a free will. It's something you choose to do. You can't be forced into it. You will not be forced into it. It is your choice to serve God or not. It's the same thing that Joshua asked his people. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God stand there and loves us, just like it is in, the, in that particular parable that our preacher loves so much. But if you have a need today to become a Christian, to become what God wants you to be because he loves you. And now is your opportunity to come and to put your Lord on in baptism and become a part of his. Would you come as we stand and sing? Hear the sweet voice of Jesus.